You want to juggle? We're not in New York. I can, I can juggle. Please go put ahead. the apples down. Here we go. Why can't we start the show? Ready? Yep. He's going to juggle. The in the middle. Oh, my God. This is going to be a different kind of VO Buzz Weekly today. You don't want to miss this. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Hey, everybody. Chuck and Stacey here with VO Buzz Weekly. Okay, check it out. Have you guys ever heard of P90X? It is the most popular fitness series of all time, over a half a billion dollars in sales and growing. And guess what? Our guest directed the videos. Thank you very much. He is the CEO and founder of Mega Mace Fitness Productions. And while he was the chief production officer at Daily Burn, he launched their entire streaming fitness library. Thank you, we love him. He's amazing, we're so pumped, get it? To get buzzed with the awesome Mason Bendewald. Mason! Hi, guys. Hello. How you doing, buddy? I'm Full doing great. Full disclosure. I was about to say, the most important Full thing. Full disclosure. The most important thing on my yes. resume is that, that we've been we're, friends forever. Yeah. You've been my best friend since almost birth. Um, and I have to say, we're so excited. Chuck's got a good decade in with yes. you. Um, but I love that I've literally had a front row seat to your life mm -hmm. to see... We had, you know, we have the stories and the in the intel that will go to our grave about each other. But we've seen each other at the lowest, the highest. We've mm -hmm. celebrated and hugged each other through the hard times. So, I love that we get to have you here and celebrate all that you've done because you talk about like a self-made entrepreneur. You've been such an inspiration to me in my life. You guys are entrepreneurs. Uh, yes, well, yeah. that's what and, they say. And, and I just want to just a little quick segue into the so entrepreneurship. I'm so excited that everyone gets to hear your story. <laughs> Absolutely, Stacy. And today is a little bit different because normally we talk a lot about voiceover and mm -hmm. voice acting and all this other crazy stuff. Today we're going to talk about entrepreneurship. We're going to talk about owning or taking ownership of your own business, whatever you're in, and the importance of that. And this guy is an expert at that. In fact, you do t talks all over the world in regards to a lot of this stuff, which we're gonna talk about today. Yeah. I, I have a talk that's called The CEO of Me, as yeah. you're uh, exactly. pointing out, which I do for mostly artists because artists notoriously are bad at business. And, and I'm an artist first and foremost. Stacy and I uh, met when we were both very much in the art world. I graduated from the art. In, um, the High School of Performing Arts, yes. sorry, and then the Art Institute of Philadelphia. Stacy went to Juilliard. So I'm probably more comfortable, or at least used to be, yeah. in a pair of tights than I am in a business suit. Yeah. Yes. Didn't you write a book once about the break tights dancing? are underneath, see. <laughs> let's put that on the side, Chuck. We're gonna get back into that. Let's go to the video. Chuck, <laughs> yeah, let's go to the video now. I'm just I'm That's just true. Yes. 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 I'm no, you're, sure. you're an amazing no, actor, dancer. Filmmaker, you know, so yeah, that's thank your first you. But I will, that is part of the discussion. Is I don't know if I was amazing, I think I was great. I certainly loved the craft, um, and I still do. But I realized early on that if I wanted to, I had to be honest with myself. Mm -hmm. And part of that was in going as much as I love my, my goal was to be a Broadway star, right. or, or at least in the ensemble. I just loved being on stage, I loved that energy. And I was very lucky to go to the High School of Performing Arts. And as, as I started to get older, though, and, and started to enter the, the workforce and started to audition and do yeah. it, I was like, wow, this is, I, I just, I was smart enough to learn early on that it wasn't just all fun and games. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but I was very clear that I really wanted to be in the business. Like I wanted to be around this energy. I wanted to be around creative people. I was like, the idea of sitting in an office was, mm. I mean, it was close to the end. <laughs> Not appealing yeah. at all. Yeah, right. at all. And yeah. I was just like, yeah, I've, I've got to figure out how to make it here. So it's kind of like the beginning, the genesis of my, the CEO of me talk, because mm -hmm. in order to sustain a career in the arts, especially in the United States, you have to also run your own business. Yes. You know, it's a, it is, and, and most people self-proclaimed, including me, go, I don't, I hate, I don't like business. I don't like the contracts. I don't like numbers. I don't like negotiating. 
all things that I would say most artists would raise their hands and say, I don't like doing those things, yeah. uh, me included. And I recognized that and said, well, you know what? Um, in order to do this, I have to come up with a plan. And part of that plan was in saying, I have to become more comfortable with that stuff so that I can yeah. create a sustainable art uh, business for myself. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so important today because today, more than ever, if you don't take care of the business side of the business, mm. the talent sometimes just get, goes unrecognized. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, the talent's not enough. Yeah, exactly. Not anymore. Or you can't or you can't afford to do it. Exactly. Or somebody else that you're trusting ends up taking the money and you end up having to do other work. Yeah. It's, you know. Mm -hmm. God, these look delicious. Don't, um, don't, don't eat our apples yet. Yeah. Just wait till the end of the show, man. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I had those delicious. Those are delicious. I'm going to save it for later. Aren't they good? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, and we can dip them in hot wax for you if you I, like, and you can light them on fire later. Here's too. the deal. Can I tell you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think we found our opening bit, Frank. Seg segue. Uh, so I always picked up green apples and I would religiously go there. The produce people knew me. And then it got to the point where we, they would go to waste. Mm. So I finally, I didn't want to, but on I finally my, got my. faux apples. By the way, we, you said we're like, we're like, yeah. you know, so bad. We're like best friends. We're not like we are. This is episode what? 318. I, fi I finally made it. Best friends. Yeah. Episode 300. Well, I was waiting for you to do something. You know, yeah, I was maybe. waiting for P90X to hit. Oh you my know, God, this is water. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect it to be? <laughs> I was going to spit it. I was going to spit it. No, please don't. We have a brand new beautiful set. Uh, entrepreneurs. Here's one of my wait. favorite lines about entrepreneurs. Yeah. And um, we're back. Yeah. And entrepreneurs are the only people that will work 100 hours to avoid working 40. And that's true of artists true. too. But mm -hmm. because so really, really ultimately what the CEO of Me Talk is, is encouraging artists to understand how hard they work and that they have to really ultimately have a plan to make it sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. Well, that makes very, very good sense. How yes. does somebody create okay. sustainable income? Yeah. I'm going to adjust my legs here. Tough told me not to move. Yeah. Well, you just can't move your top half. Mm. Here you go. Perfect. Uh, so, so right, every today, like one of the hot, hot ideas is I'm going to create something. I want to have sustainable income. I want to do it in my sleep. And this is not sexy, but it is very true. And this is part of your business plan that everybody should have is that sustainable income, you can start today. Um, it is, and the most, the, the easiest, simplest way is a Roth IRA. I'm not here to give like tons of business advice, but I just want to be uh, tell it like it is, which is like paying, not like, paying yourself versus one of the Rule tenants. Number one. Yep. Uh, so you're you're trying to grow your business. Many people, especially artists, think like, I'm just going to work hard and, 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 and put my nose to grind so I'm never going to give up on myself. And eventually, I'm going to hit this point where I become famous and I'm going to make millions of dollars and then all of this will be worth it. And while that's possible, it's very unlikely. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't believe in yourself and you shouldn't um, do everything you can to work towards this goal of being yeah. great or noted or whatever in your field. But you should, you should be planning along the way, no matter what, to have money in the bank. Yeah. And Later. a Roth IRA, yeah. mm -hmm. I won't spend a ton of time talking about it, but it's the simplest plan for yourself to literally retire rich. Yes. It's, um, it was set up by the government. Um, I forget what year it was. It named after Senator Roth, who I believe uh, brought the bill in. And in essence, the money that you put into an account, which you can do anywhere um, through your bank, through like Janus or Fidelity, any of yep. those names we all know, and it's compounding in interest. And that that is that is where you're making money in your sleep. And yeah. while you don't get the tax benefit now, when you take it out, there's no, no tax. No, there is no, yeah, there is no yeah. tax rate. So you there's don't get no the deduction tax. now, but later you won't pay taxes on Correct. it. Correct. The, the really important thing is, and, it, and, it, this, and it's the hardest, it's this, uh, I forget what you call it, but it's the, it's the opposite issue. The younger you are, the sooner you start, the more money you'll have, mm -hmm. even if you Absolutely. start small. Because yes. of compounding interest. Because of compounding yes. interest. And I have to say something right yes. now that 
to some people, this may not even seem like, you know, what is he talking about? Right. Or yeah. Why should I, you so know, I don't, I don't have to need worry that. about it. I have and all the here's time the, the thing. World. The thing is this, us entrepreneurs, we never expect to fail. Right. We don't plan to right. fail. Mm-hmm. Nothing's going to get in our way. No matter what, we are going to succeed. Yep. Yes. But the thing is this, that we don't know is when we're actually going to succeed. When when that year is. I wanted to be a rock star when I was 18 years old. All right? I didn't actually go out and play shows in front of 40, 50,000 people till I was in my 40s. Okay? Which is a long time. So... I didn't expect that. So had I been, had I known about a Roth IRA and been investing just a little bit of money, That's paying it. myself yes. first, you just, get paid 200 bucks, throw 25 bucks in there. You get paid 500 bucks, yeah, put 100 bucks, first. whatever it is, but you pay yourself. Had I done that mm-hmm. by the time I was doing what I wanted to be doing, I would have been pretty much set. Yeah. And and this is yeah. what, I, this this is what I tell artists. I say, because it's not sexy and it's not exciting, this idea of like putting money away. Mm -hmm. Um, But what it gives you as an artist is peace of mind. Right. So if you start early, so for those young entrepreneurs, artists out there, do exactly what Chuck said. Just start putting a little bit away. And when you're in that habit of putting it away for yourself, all of a sudden you turn around one day and you look at that account and you're like, wow. Where'd that come from? I've got Mm-hmm. $60,000 in cash. And you might've never had that kind of money ever before in your life. And it is sitting there and it is yours. And so even while you're struggling, maybe one year, that money's, which whole different story, that money you're really not supposed to use until retirement, right. but it's just the peace of mind that you, it's your money and you've put it there. I'm reaching for the apples again. And, <laughs> and you put it there and you're not going to Starve to death. Right. Exactly. That's exciting. Right. Chuck, do you want And especially when you I don't. Okay, I've already right. eaten. Right. And especially when you do have a windfall, you get a big campaign or you yeah. get a big ongoing gig, that's even more time to put more away. And because it isn't always going to last. It's yeah. the roller coaster. You're going to have don't great gigs. Don't buy the fancy car. Exactly. Don't spend don't less o- when you have spend more. Spend a little bit on yourself. Yeah. But don't go and buy the things that depreciate. For those who don't know, like you buy, you buy a big fancy car, it seems like you have so much money. But that car goes down in value. Don't lease cars, buy them. It's my yeah. uh, like simple things is so l- let's actually go to one of the major things you have to do is you have to have absolutely a business plan. Um, one of the simplest things you can do is go to sba.gov. Yep. That stands for small business administration.government. And they have a really robust um, follow along guide to creating your own business plan. And what it is, is it's a roadmap to success. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people get away with kind of just winging it, but the difference is a business plan is a plan to get you there. It's not always easy to answer all the questions and it shouldn't be because if it was easy, it, you know, you, yeah. you, we wouldn't need help. Right. Um, the government, and it sounds weird, I'm talking about all this stuff. I'm really an artist at heart. I mean, I really am. You're a businessman. I, but You're I, but I've learned how to do the business stuff. Mm-hmm. A, the government wants you to succeed. The government wants small businesses because small businesses pay taxes. Right. If you're not doing well, you're on food stamps and you're on unemployment, and that doesn't help the government. The government right. wants money so the economy keeps going. Yeah. So when people might go like, well, why would I trust SBA.gov? It literally is a free resource. There's lots of stuff there. And it's a, it's a, it is a follow along step-by-step way of, of writing down your business plan. And the, and the toughest stuff in there is the stuff that you have to do the most. Yeah. And uh, artists like to do, um, I know I've done one in the past, like vision boards, mm-hmm. you know, where you like cut stuff out of magazines. You're like, well, I want yep. the Lamborghini and I want the yep. house in, you know, in Malibu. And I want to, what did you call it? What? A Lamborghini. Board. A vision board. <laughs> I was like a vision board. Uh, yeah. I call it my dream board or a yeah. dream board. Yeah. yeah, I say dream building. Yeah, and 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 those are those are great, but they're fun yeah. and they are truly dreams. Yeah. And I and I well well dreams are great. They aren't a plan to get you to the goals you want. Exactly. Yes. They can so help you motivate marry you, the two. Yes. But you need to have mm-hmm. exactly. I I one hundred percent. You need black man. and white steps. Action. Absolutely. And action so I'm, I'm gonna a- I'm gonna ask you guys this question. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you a question because normally I would ask this of a class. Mm-hmm. But what is, and if you know the answer, please don't yell it out. Raise okay. your hand. What is the number one, what is the number one job of a CEO of a company? 
I'm going to say to make sure that the company is continually making a profit. That's it. That's so it. The, so the number one, it's only one job. Right. That's it the is job. to make profit. Hired and fired based on that. Mm-hmm. And, and that is important to remember that as an artist, you literally have to split your brain in half. Yeah. We both have artistic sides to our brain and then we have the analytical side and the analytical side is more of the CEO. And you, you have to discipline yourself to go, all right, the CEO part of me has to think about creating profit. It's important. You need to make enough money to sustain your love in the arts yeah. and, and be able to retire. That's the goal in my opinion. Yeah. You don't have to make a billion dollars. That's yeah. not necessary. It really isn't yeah. um, to be happy and successful. So if you can discipline your mind to, to stop and have the CEO go, right, I'm trying, I'm trying to survive in the arts or thrive in the arts. One of those things is pay myself first, put money away into a Roth IRA or invest. You make a big chunk of money, invest in something that is going to pay you down the line, like a piece of property. Don't invest in a car that's fast and cost a bazillion right. dollars to take care of and yeah. depreciates and the insurance is expensive and all of that, yeah. which a lot of us do when we're young, especially. You know? Absolutely. And, and, I've and, done it. and when you're young, you also have these glimmers of, oh, it's, I'm going to be famous and rich and this is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and it yeah. doesn't, it, it often is like a blip. And then you're like, well, I don't know what to do. I haven't, I haven't planned for how to sustain this. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's even true with people that have tremendous amount of success yeah. and then they have nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Because they never yeah. planned for that. Today, you you know business so well and you know how to take a business and turn it into a successful business because you understand the mechanics of having a plan. Um, but you weren't always like that, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. When was it when it finally clicked and you applied and went like, whoa, when was that? I, there was no one moment. There, there was lots. I think the earliest moment was in, in recognizing what I was talking about earlier yeah. was if I wanted to be in the arts, I had to, I, I had to seize what I was best at. Yeah. And I recognized it was, this took a while to totally understand, but I was like, you know, I, specifically in theater, I not only, besides performing, I was a really good stage manager. Stacy was a stage Man, manager too. Good yes. at that. Yeah. He was and very I, good. And I really, yeah. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, the structure and the, a bit of the control and the command of helping everybody get the job done. Yeah. And just being a part of that Organizing success and team. The chaos. It felt yeah. great. Yeah. And, and and just a little segue, please, yeah. and you can continue. Yeah. Yeah. But for those of you that don't know, yeah. Mason did that for our 200th yeah. show. Our 200th show, you can watch that back in January 2016. With a live we audience. We did a live audience, 375 people. Chuck said, you know, we both knew there's no way we can do 37 plus guests, a live audience. We have to hand it over. And I said, well... I said to Chuck, the only person I'm going to trust with this baby is yeah. this guy because you are the most, not only my best friend. I, it was a blast. But you're and I know, but an I incredible had director. no idea. And you just, I handed it over to you that morning and you just, man. It one, was, I remember one of the things seamless. I was like. Seamless. One of, one of yeah. the things I remember yes. saying, which, which was fun, is really taking it out of your hands. Yes. But you guys. Go be the stars. Let me make sure that it all runs smoothly. And yeah. it was really hard for you to do because you're. You know, you guys are a wrecking ball team of doing it all, but that on the big stage yeah. with that many yes. guests and everything. Yes. Yeah, uh, and it really was fun, and so I, well, I yes. had a great time. And, 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 and hold on, and then and then Taylor Rummel and his production team, and then Gina Kay, our great friend. Yep. we literally had the dream production team. We did, we did. Um, and looking back on that and day, it was, it was incredible. There is no way we could have pulled off yeah. what we pulled off. Without, yeah. How we pulled it off. Without your assistance, and 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 so thank you for that. You're welcome. And yes. Now you can go on that with your fun. story if you'd like. <laughs> no, but that you know you you have you're great uh, in the film produced, but on your feet, and that speaks to your abilities as a stage manager and nice. as an actor that you're in the moment, yep. on the fly, problem solving. So when you're when you're really good at something, sometimes not sometimes, I think most of us tend to downplay it. Right, because um, you're like, oh, I'm just, I'm just naturally good at that. I'm not, I'm not like great or I'm not special. Right. But 
I, I am. I mean, and to your guy's point, like I'm special at it and I don't, um, and I enjoy it. I don't mind saying that. So I recognize that when I was younger as an actor and going like, there's all these actors around me and I love acting too, but everybody's going, trying to get the, you know, the starring role, the part. The and I was like, there's not many people that are really gunning for stage manager. And I'm great at that. I wonder, I wonder what else that feels like. So this is like now going after high school and stuff. And I, and I recognize yeah. that that really does go hand in glove with producing and directing. Mm -hmm. And, and I finally had the guts to say to myself, like in my, like 1920, I was like, you know what? I think I want to be a director. And that took, that I took balls, honestly, yeah. to say, yeah. to say, cause Absolutely. nobody, cause you can't go to school to be a director really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's not like, you have to, first of all, believe in yourself and have a sensibility of I'm willing to be the general, if you will, and, and command and, uh, take, take over and be willing to also take the fall. Yeah. Right? Um, and ha just have the vision. Yeah. Um, so I, I I took that I took that move that bold move early, but I also realized I, Stacy and I did uh, a theater production. This was my this was actually the first thing mm -hmm. I did as a producer and directed Stomp in Our Way, which was a completely um, original song and dance um, kind of almost vaudevillish, if you will. Yeah, yeah. And Live it was, band and it was it was, it was incredible. Yeah. Um, but I also realized at the end of that, I didn't know, I, I tell this story often, but Stacy's father, Dr. Oswald, and, and, and Stacy's mom, Joanne, came. And Dr. Oswald, who I respect very much, came up and sh was shaking my hand. He goes, Mason, this is unbelievable. This is really great. And I thought, this is the moment. This is where, this is where I find out, like, now, I don't know how, but, like, from his <laughs> lips to... Broadway somehow I was ears I'm whisked away <laughs> yeah. yes. and he goes and I'm I what are, I'm like 22 maybe yeah. I don't know really yeah. young and he goes what are you gonna do with it <laughs> and I remember going like I don't know, no, I, don't know. I like I like that's this not is, the plan this is as far as I could possibly get I didn't yeah. have a business plan and I also recognized then and there too was um, theater really hard to make a living at yeah and I didn't understand anything about film production, video production. And so I went back to school mm -hmm. and here, here's also very interesting in that, you know, I was, and this, this is a, this is a long period of time. I went back to school when I was older, but I was also not recognizing in order. This is, this is kind of an unwritten business plan at this point, but I was like, my goal is to make it in the arts. I, I, I don't want to be in an office. Right. I'd done a lot of other stuff. I'd sold used office furniture. Ugh. It's like the low part of my life. I did the like, book work she, for Stacey the company. Stacey worked there. Used yeah. office furniture for yeah. several years. And oh I was making good I was a bookkeeper <laughs> for a used office furniture company. Yeah. And I was Take making, a moment with that. And I you was were paying the dues, literally. And I, and I was, While I was dancing, yes. And I was making pretty good money. And mm -hmm. I recognized, I was like, I don't, the, you, all the money in the world couldn't keep me. What am I doing? Yeah. And so through like a, a self-imposed business plan, so I went back to school. I went to the Art Institute of Philadelphia and I gra and, and, and while I was there, I studied a bunch of stuff that was very, very helpful. I had some law classes because I knew I wanted to be a producer because I knew if I was going to have my own company, I, I was going to have to understand some contract stuff, which I knew I hated. Yeah. And, um, uh, the the attorney that taught that class was my attorney for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I haven't met my first business partner in school there. It was very, Don Argot, very successful cinematographer and mm -hmm. director of documentaries now. And um, and wrote my first business plan for Mega Mace, my production company. Yeah. And that business plan that I wrote in, in 1994 is the one I still go back to and tweak and iterate on to this day. Well, that concludes part one with our good friend, Mason Bendewald. We're gonna be back next week with part two, so check it out. We will. Thanks for watching, you guys, and make sure to follow all of us on social. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo Fit Rock. Rock.
The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.